On today's podcast, uh, you realise that we don't have Cantona with us, a uh, very surprising reason why. Uh, so we talk about endorsements and match bonuses um, and how lucrative they can be. Also, I have my rant of the season. Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast. Uh, I've got the notorious SID and Chris Stark with me. As usual, how are we boys? Okay? Really good. I'm 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 top of the world. Really, really good. Yeah. How are you, lads? Yeah, all good. All good. I um, yeah. I'm still I, I know you're, you're very home. unwell at the moment, Pete. So we're in yeah, a weird situation where me and Sid's are in the pub and we're watching you on a screen here and you're you're in your home, right? I am in my home, yeah. I'm I'm still here. I, I've yeah, I've had a tough time, to be honest. Um I'm still in the process of just getting better. I'm in that process where I feel like I'm fine and I wanna kind of get out and at them, but Ab's kind of holding me back. And although she means well, you know, she's been an amazing nurse looking after me because I haven't been great. <laughs> I've kind of got to the stage now where she's keeping the shackles on me. Um, I, although like, I want to, she's kind of like Florence Nightingale. It's become Florence Nightmaringale now. <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through how she is as a nurse then. What do you mean? Like, how's, how's she doing this so, so well? Talk us through it, please, please. Well, I don't know just, where this is going to go. She, she, Florence... <laughs> Florence Nightmaringale, she is great. Um, she worries, that's the problem. And then like, when I feel like I'm better, I do it every time. And I think it's just probably a male trait where you think, ah, oh, I'm fine now. And it's, you know, but yeah, she's probably right. That I need to kind of, I need to rest, not do too much. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to overexert me, but she's feeding me up now quite, quite heavily. Um, and it's like, like a child I'm sitting there I'm like I can't eat anymore mum and she's forced to get down me saying that you've got got to be stronger so that's where we are at the moment Mate, I've got the opposite problem at the moment I'm trying to eat less I know we touched on this in the last podcast I'm trying a couple of things I'm trying a bit of exercise I'm trying to eat less because apparently that works and um, mm. but that's so difficult so you've got the opposite to me You're you're getting loads of food and I'm I'm eating a lot less and just trying to be happy. It's a weird one. Mm. Yeah, very weird one. Yeah, but you know what? We've we've, we've kind of got into um, the food situation without actually addressing the fact that we have we're boring everyone to tears about how we're feeling. We haven't got we're supposed to have Cantonar on today. Oh, where do we start with this? So yes, we we obviously did an, a whole episode <laughs> largely focused on the brilliance of. Cantona ahead of our chat with him, which was going to be this podcast. And uh, actually, this morning, we were expecting that chat to go ahead. And then we got messages, what, a couple of hours ago? Yeah, well, it was basically like, I'm not very well. Um, you know, I couldn't kind of come in. We wanted to do it properly. Um, so we've just postponed it. It will happen, but uh, at the moment, it's been postponed. And we would have loved to have him on. But there was one slight issue we had with the chat and that was um, we were told quite late on that um, there would be absolutely no football chat uh, with Eric. So I thought it was slightly slightly strange considering we're a football podcast and he's a, a footballer we very much admire. But he is pursuing a career in music. I mean, it's pure Maverick style, isn't it? The Maverick that he is, he can kind of do what he wants it's but I, it was so a bit good. left field wasn't it I no, was so I geared it. up to ask him certain things and I'm now I'm thinking all right, well you know we can obviously we was obviously going to touch on the, the singing and acting career but the bulk of it now it's um, yeah because it's interesting. to be fair that's just what you normally do like if he's 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 got music and obviously we want to learn so much about that but it's Eric Cantona so obviously you naturally will talk about you talk about both you talk about the football and you talk yeah. about that but the idea you don't talk about any football, I think, is just brilliant and so Cantona. <laughs> it's him, and I would it's have him, loved like, only he this so much. Get away with that. Imagine but, being Eric Cantona and going, I'm, at, I'm not talking about any football whatsoever. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's so what, good. What and, a man. Ge genuinely, I, I'm quite fascinated to have a conversation with him, you know, a, a quite a long conversation with Eric Cantona on this podcast where we don't talk about football once. I think it's genius from the guy. Yeah, there was also there was also a warning to say that if we do, he's just going to walk out. And I thought it'd be it also it would almost be even better than 
just saying goodbye if he just strolled off. Just terminates it there and then. But how he just does terminated. He, I get it with me, right? Because because of my job and that. But like, it's almost more difficult for you two and Eric Cantona to have a conversation without it naturally going towards football. Like it's it's obscenely difficult yeah. for you boys to, to not to not mention it. I don't know what you. I don't know what we talk about. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. If I walk past Eric Cantona in the street, I said, "Oh, Eric, how's things?" And then, like my, obviously, I'd ask him what he's up to now, and he'd, probably, you know, singing whatever, and you know, it'd be difficult to kind of to not speak about football in the slightest. Mm. But then again, with Elton John, we spoke more about football than we did the music, didn't we? Uh, so, you know, I guess... he was much more comfortable talking about football than he was his music. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, talking of Eric and he's singing, did, have you seen him uh, perform on Michael McIntyre? I've not seen it. Seen I heard this? it was... This was a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's something. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, you have to watch it. You I, have to watch what it. What music is it that he's doing? I, this is the thing. I'd love to be having this chat with him. It was like, but, a, what, it was like, a, like a love ballad, wasn't it? It was a kind of sort of low-pitched, deep thinking song, but without singing. You need to watch it to be, to, to it, believe like, it. Have you it's seen crazy, it? honestly. It's, it's incredible. Have you seen Nick Knowles sing? Is it like that? No, I've not seen him sing. Have you seen that, Crouchy? No, I don't I haven't seen You've Nick Knowles. You've never heard no. his version of Adele, Feel My Love? Shut make, up, feel my really? Love. Joking. Do you want a bit? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Get it out. Go on. Right. Give us a blast. Bear with When the rain is blowing in your face And the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love When the evening shadows and the stars appear and there's no one there to dry your tears I could hold you for a million years To make you feel my love I actually think that's decent, so, yeah. That's nice for making that. He's gone with no music as well, like... Was there no music in that at all? He was playing the guitar, wasn't he? He's playing the guitar and singing there, yeah, yeah. Thoughts? Well, who, who knew? Yeah, this is what I mean. I like people that are stepping out and doing something else with their career. It kind of sounds like he's put that, that holiday voice on. You know, we sort of go into a foreign Spanglish. Oh, yeah, like a he's Steve gone like McLaren. A he's, gone, he's gone like a deep... Like a Joey Barton interview. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't sound like... It, it doesn't sound like his natural voice, that. I really... I, I actually I really... Think it's, I think it's great. Really well, that's it. better than Eric's, I've got to say. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, like, really. Yeah. He's, okay. He could be a shout for Crouchfest, you know, Nick Knowles. Yeah, yeah. Maybe no, a different love song. Yeah. Eric Cantona or Nick Knowles. Oh my God. Can you imagine Eric Cantona doing Crouchfest? I mean, that that's the thing. We'd love him on this podcast so much. And if he... I, I think he's earned the privilege. You know, we did a whole episode about some of the brilliance of Eric Cantona. I think as a footballer, would you boys agree, he's earned the right to come on a football podcast and not talk about football. <laughs> he certainly has, yeah. If anyone yeah. can, it's him. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Listen, it's, stay tuned for this one. I apologise we haven't got him this week. It sums us up as a podcast. Um, what? Just talking about Ab, as we were before, um, I got in touch with Carol Vorderman. Do you remember we asked about um, who's kicked off more, me throughout my professional career or Abby throughout our marriage? Um, well, Carol's got back with some stats for us. Would you like to hear them? Please. Um, <clears throat> in Crouchy's professional club career, he kicked off a grand total of 1,207 times. P has been with Ab for 20 years, 12 years of marriage, uh, and she's gotten more prolific as she, as, as she had later in their career. Uh, so assuming before marriage it was once a week and factoring in the honeymoon period, 
Uh, that would have been 468 times. In the latter years, uh, San Marino has become more prolific, kicking off now twice a day. So by factoring in the gradual increase in this, we can conclude that since being married, San Marino has kicked off 3,710, uh, giving her a grand total of 4,178 kickoffs, making her almost three and a half times more prolific than Peter uh, when it comes to kicking off. However, this is not factoring in Pete's youth career or the international breaks. Okay, so that's an interesting, that's an interesting take on it because <laughs> when you're considering whether Abs has kicked off with Pete more or less times than Pete's kicked off, should you include the youth career as part of that? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put the youth career in there. The, the international, the should international count. should probably come in there which is going to bump that up, but nowhere near as prolific as abs. No, I mean, and even if you include those two things, I don't think it touches the sides. If no. you're saying Abby kicks off three and a half times more than yeah. Pete has done even with those games, it's not going to... Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable stats. Yeah, shit in the house at the moment, Pete. Uh, no, no, that's why I'm <laughs> discussing it. You just look very confident <laughs> as you were saying it. <laughs> as, I just as, heard the as, door go and thought, right, I'll bring this one up now. Has San Marino seen this stat? Uh, no, she hasn't actually. Right, okay. No. I think she'd be, she, I think she'd be quietly pleased with being pretty. Well, it's an unbelievable. It's, it's really unbelievable. Awesome. I think so. This is, well, okay. I, Pete, it's such a shame Valentine's Day isn't coming up because it'd be amazing to write all of this in a card <laughs> and yeah. just see how it goes down. Yeah. <laughs> prolific. Absolutely prolific. Fantastic. All right. Uh, oh, should we get into the pod, lads? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. Hi, guys. Uh, this is a little bit of a call to arms. I've realised that uh, Ben Foster is a goalkeeper uh, and he's got more subscribers than us um, on YouTube. It's an absolute disgrace, really. We're, we're planning on being as big as Mr. Beast. Um, and if you haven't uh, subscribed, then you're a Carl. Uh, and I can't condone that. So please get in touch, hit subscribe um, and make us as big as Mr. Beast. Or at least bigger than Foster. Right, so today's podcast is player endorsements, and it's something that, like, I don't know, you don't you don't hear many players kind of talk about, really. Like, obviously, we've had the kind of boot deals. I think there's been adverts and uh, various sponsorships. Certainly with England as well, they'll have the FA. I'll have their sponsors, and just wanted to kind of dig down into into how they work, really, and what they do. And um, it, is, it is interesting. I remember certainly my agent came around to my house when I was 14 years old. And my first kind of, I think, foray into like gear or, you know, stuff that I was given was, was when he kind of bought me with a, a box of Adidas stuff, all the new Adidas gear, a couple of pairs. I had a pair of studs, a pair of moles, and he brought this box around for me. And I was like, right, where do I sign? So that, that seems to be the first port of call, isn't it? With all agents, with youngsters now, it's the case. It's literally a case of if you want Adidas, if you want Nike, Puma, whatever you want, it's the case of right. Yeah, we can put you straight in contact with them and even bring the goods round. And I think that's the first. Um, it definitely sucks mm. you in. Who was, um, since when you were playing, who was yours? Who do you who were you sponsored? So I was by? sponsored by Adidas when I. I mean, I, when I first when I was at Reading, it was uh, I had a little stint with Puma. And they took us down to the head offices, showed you around, you know, all the, they, they partnered up with, um, with Ferrari, wasn't it? And the F1 as well at some point. So it was a case of that, that sort of market come into it as well. But the majority was Adidas. Was that the, kin, uh, the kit manufacturer of Reading at the time? Yes. Yeah. So do you all naturally then get signed up to to that as part of no. the deal? or No. So that's a strange one. Yeah. So you find that the brand are selecting certain players yeah because yeah they just you know it was, it was well we had a, a handful of probably players that could have you know endorsed that um, and yeah I'd done it for about two years and I enjoyed it but Adidas was the main ones throughout my whole career they were the main the main ones and they were great and they had everyone as well so but when you, the club are selecting what players or is it the, it was more the brand isn't it so when the brand are selecting what players at the club they want as kind of yeah I guess what represents 
their brand and, and the club. Mm. They're picking five players, bit of a cross section, that kind of thing. Yep. Do you find that other players are a bit pissed off about that situation, or or, or is it that, just unspoken? Yeah, it's just, I think it's that unspoken rule, isn't it, Crouchy? So even one of them, where there was probably two or three of us that were sponsored by Puma, but we never discussed what our deals were because then it was obviously individual. Then it was down to your agents and your PR company to negotiate your terms. So it, we would have all been on probably different terms. How you think? Well, were were once, you the most expensive at Reading, do you reckon? Uh, probably not. Kevin Doyle was was their striker, so he may have had, you know, for every 10 or 15 goals, you've got a certain amount. So, yeah. Do you uh, get more money if you get the boot in? Like, if you get the badge, like, if you lift, if you take your boots off when you celebrate and that kind of thing and wave it in front of the camera. Well, yeah, didn't Messi do that in the final? Did he take mm. his boot off once? Ronaldo did that as well, didn't they? That Brazilian yeah. Ronaldo. I remember, like, you know, I remember those days, like, I could tell you through the, kind of like the contract. Certainly when I got, because I never liked, I, I, I like wearing my, I wore World Cups till I was about 23. And then obviously I got in the England squad and that, and the Champions League. And obviously that's where the, the kind of eyes are on you massively. And that was when, you know, all the kind of boot deals like kind of circulate and you try and pick the best one. I remember when I got in the England squad, there was a, there was a toss up between Puma and Umbro. And um, I remember Michael Owen kind of sheer or whatever like Umbro weren't they um, yeah, I remember. trying to think who else uh, and then and obviously Puma was the other one that I had and they were the two the two big ones uh, but there was kind of a little bit of jealousy like say there's like five or six or seven Adidas players in the dressing room and say six Nike players in the dressing room like if someone got the boots before someone else who was sponsored by the same they'd be fuming they'd be absolutely fuming it's like where are you getting this gear from how come they're showing you more love than me and there was definitely that kind of jealousy and hierarchy in, in regards to it. But certainly when I got in the Champions League, it was like, it would be set out in the contract. If you make an appearance in the Champions League, you'd get paid a certain amount. Um, if you scored a goal in the Champions League, you get a certain amount and it would go up every kind of round you went through. So if so you, you get got a to goal like, bonus from the brand yeah, from as the well brand, as the club. Yeah, yeah. Basically, because the goal bonus you, you wouldn't get for um, your your club from your club, like you're paid a great wage, you know, you're a centre forward, you've got to score goals. That's part and parcel. You're just expected to do that. You did get a goal but for, bonus for, for a brand point of view. It's massive for them if you score or play in the Champions League or in a World Cup. So when when the contract comes through, it's like right if you get to the final of the Champions League you score in a court final or you score in a semi-final, you score in a final, it's actually very lucrative to, oh, wow. to a player uh, through, through the sponsor. And the same with, you know, the, the World Cup. If you get, you know, certain appearances for England and it might be between, say, uh, zero and 10 appearances will be a certain amount. Between 10 and 20 appearances will be another amount. Um, and then obviously scoring would be, a, would be a bonus on top of that. Is this big money? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 when you're in the Champions League in, the, in England, yeah. Um, and I, I've been on the other side of that, come out the other side where I wasn't playing for England. I ended up at Stoke and I'm playing in less kind of televised games, less um, high profile games. Then obviously that, that contract comes right down and it's like, it will end up being, you know, I'll get a goal bonus for Premier League goals, but it wouldn't be anything like what I was getting when I was playing for England. It's mad, is it? The, the ones that you say there about the TV games. Do you remember when literally post-match interviews, players straight on, on the pitch or down, more, it was more likely down the tunnel when it first started, but the kit man would always give you, do you remember they'd always give you a LucasAid bottle, Crouchy? Mm, yeah. Because they were sponsored by LucasAid, so they'd be like literally hold that and then just take a few swigs to get the, because they would be on a sponsorship with LucasAid to go, right, if we endorse you and we get your brand on screen 10 times throughout the season, we'll get another X amount. So they're forever shoving things on you to just get on, on TV. If you look at the kit man, like when, when a player scored a goal, if you look at like the kit man or there'll always be someone whose kind of job it is to get the brand out there and they it kind of like get given like a LucasAid bottle because I think it's like 500 quid or grand every, mm. every kind of, every time it's shown on the telly, basically. To the player or to the kit man? No, to the club. It, it the was club, then, wasn't it? But I think I think the person who 
tries to get it in, we'll definitely get beyond some sort of bonus. Yeah, they should definitely be on commission. I wasn't aware of these side missions. I mean, you assume it happens, <laughs> but the players are always having a drink in those <laughs> interviews. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. be so, <laughs> so suspicious moving forward. That's it, you know, like that's the thing. Like, we don't, we, if you if you see when you do the interviews, like, I, I don't think it happens as much now. Like, there's no. so much football elsewhere. But this is back in the day when you know that kind of revenue was meant a lot. You'd always get given a a bottle of whatever was the sponsor was um, usually Lucasade back back in the day, and you'd do your interview with the bottle of Lucasade. Pete, did you what what kind of do you remember? Do you remember any examples of these sort of outrageous bonuses that you would get for? They are side um, missions, aren't they? It feels. Well, well, yeah, I mean, incentives. It's another incentives, incentive, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, like, like, the thing is, is the, with the incentives, like the incentives in the Champions League became became so big. Like, you know, you get to a final. It was like, you know, every game was. I mean, especially for the young lads. If you ever see, young, you know, some of the young lads on the bench, like they they're part of the squad and they win a, a game. You know, I remember a lot of the lads, there was like Darren Potter, Neil Mellor, um, Stephen Warnock. A lot of them, that were, they, they got through to Istanbul in 2005. They were, a lot of them were on the bench. Um, if you'd seen how buzzing they were every single game, because those bonuses are like life-changing. You know, for, for a player on 100 grand a week, there's, it's, you know, you're, it, it isn't. But to a, to a young lad who's just coming through, I mean, you're talking... You're talking big, big money, you know. Like by by the final, you're talking six figures, um, you know. If you if you win that game, so so those bonuses mean so much, certainly to the young lads, and to because obviously the revenue that the Champions League is generating is so big for the club, so that's reflected in the bonuses for the players. But the brand bonuses are a really interesting one. By the way, I thought you got goal bonuses. I thought that was a thing. No, strikers. I've known strikers to get goal bonuses as well, regardless of how much they're on. Yeah. I know they're, pay, they're paid to score, but they'll, like they'll be another incentive. Yeah, it won't be every goal. It might just be, right, we can't do every goal, but every time you get, when you get to five, it's X amount. When yeah. you get to 10, it's... Yeah, right. So, But the brand bonuses I, f- I find really interesting because, right, let's say it's a drink coming in. What other examples are there? If you... Was your robot celebration actually <laughs> a... I'm trying to think who for. Was this... Well, was listen, I'm, not gonna say, I'm not going to sit here and say, listen, it was fun and it was really kind of... It was really natural at the time. But it's still been... Listen, there's still been brands that I've been a part of that have paid me money to, to do the robot. It's ended up being quite lucrative. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Um, there was a Pringles campaign, um, yeah. which is... Pringles, obviously, uh, turned into Pringles um, for, I think it was a 2006 World Cup. And I was on the bottle. I was on the, the can or whatever it is, the, the tube of Pringles. I think it was me, Fabregas, and um, Anelka. Might have been. Might have been one Spanish player as well, David Villa or someone. And um, I was the English representative. And I remember we had a big, we'd done a big advert and Anelka was doing his, I don't know if you remember that, that yeah, thing Anelka yeah. used to do. Um, Fabregas, I think, he, I think he might have done like a little Bebeto one in a window. And then I had to do the robot. Um, and I, we were, I was on the can doing the robot, this kind of thing. And mom, I remember I've got, a, I've got loads of personalized ones. I might have them in this office actually. Um, of per, like ones of, you know, with my name on and things like that. Wherever you went, it was like, it was that. And obviously that was, that was obviously the robot celebration that was, I suppose, good for the for brands. Yeah, I but think, it's, it's, it's not a cheap dance if people want you to do the robot. It's, <laughs> it's safe to say on this podcast. Yeah. It's, it's probably one of the more expensive dances in the world now. I would say only second to probably the Bolero um, from mm. Torval and Dean. Yeah, yeah. yeah who I, think, I imagine yeah. wants serious one of the most to expensive, do that. One of the, most, uh, one of the most lucrative dances that's ever been seen. <laughs> I mean, other 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 brands. <laughs> don't even know what that means. No, that's just what an amazing thing to say. You can you can have a really distinguished football career and also own one of the world's most expensive dances. <laughs> it, should be. it needs to be patented, doesn't it? I mean, other brands here, Crouchy. It says that uh, that you've been lucky enough to endorse. We've got Bovril, L'Oreal, Ted Baker, Carphone Warehouse. 
obviously we know you do a lot of stuff with Paddy Power, which we'll come on to in a bit. But and then and M and S. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, I've done I've done lots of various bits and pieces. I remember uh, I remember Hyundai giving me a car once, um, which was amazing. And uh, I remember sitting in there's a picture of it out there somewhere. You can Google that. It's um, I'm sitting in this car and that's Hyundai giving the thumbs up. <laughs> And um, I'm at Liverpool at the time. I remember it had a concierge button. Like they said to me, oh, this is an amazing thing. You'd press this button and um, someone at Hyundai just answered questions. So it was a bit like Siri, but in the kind of the early, early 2000s. Wow. Like a Hyundai Siri. Um, and I pressed the button and it'd be like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> I go, hi. And I'll, you could just ask them a question like the internet. Amazing, but it was an actual person. Incredible. <laughs> Unbelievable. But um, yeah, they were, with England as well, quite a lot of kind of brands. And I think that I was part of the, the change over there, you know, where kind of David Beckham was generating so much money, I think, for the FA that I, kind of, I think he kind of inter, intervened and said, um, I think we should be getting, as players, you know, we're, we're kind of generating all this revenue. Um, he didn't say it himself. I think it was Simon Fuller. We had this meeting with Simon Fuller, who was Victoria Beckham's um, agent at the time. He, he came is, in. And is this the same Simon Fuller that made S Club? That's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he did. He did. Uh, what was the one before? Was it Pop Stars? Okay. Yeah. Was that the one before X Factor and all that? He's um, well. He supposedly is the what the S and S Club Seven means. Is it really Simon? Yeah. Because I, I might be wrong on this, but I think it's true that he set up S Club Seven and named it after himself. No way! <laughs> As you do. That's unbelievable. Yeah. As you do. Well, anyway, this fellow he was obviously very he knew what he was doing, um, and I think that was the changeover where kind of there was a big shift in in kind of power from the, from the FA held held all the power to the players really because. Um, when you talk about player power, it was all of a sudden we were we were generating, I suppose, the, what people want to sponsor, and that was the realization. And obviously, it was Dave Beckham and his team kind of understanding that that was the case. Um, me personally, I was just happy to be there. But then I remember um, people like National Express um, trying to think at the time. There was um, maybe Vauxhall. Maybe it might come in slightly later. Yeah, were, you, you know, were you post Green Flag? nationwide green flag these big sponsors were coming in but then there was like certain things you had to do um but you'd only have to be there for an hour uh and for me personally i was like i remember these calls coming in to my agent it was like oh so and so steven gerrard can't do this national express one can you nip down there and i was like well, i can keep keep them coming i was like <laughs> i'll do it well, I think it's like me and Martin Keown that were every Keown single was, one of them. I was going to say, he definitely done it. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going over, I think I had to sign a bus at the National Express Centre, which is opposite Twickenham. And obviously, this was a really kind of well-paid job. And um, I remember sitting there with my mate, and he lived in Twickenham at the time. And the National Express bus centre is, is there. You had to go and sign a bus and take a photo. So I, had a, I was having a beer with my mate, just said, I've got to go and do this uh, signing over the road. Literally, the pub's there and then the bus station's there. So he said, uh, all right, I'll, I'll just wait for you here then, shall I? And I said, yeah, no worries. So I left my pint, kind of went over, signed this bus and then and then came back again. And he was like, well, that was it. And I was like, yeah. And then I just carried on having a beer with him and I was like, that's fucking, that's quite a lucrative b- <laughs> bus signing. Because <laughs> I was like, my mate was like, no way. Is that just really just happened? I was like, yeah. Bex, Bex was the one, the one that started it, wasn't he? Because if you actually go back, you remember him. He was the first one that really broke the mould. Because you remember the picture like, with him holding so many pairs of Adidas Predators. Mm. And then the mm. Brill, he's done the Brill Cream, didn't he? With his, obviously his hair. Mm. And it sort of started everyone off on an individual brand's endorsement, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think with that, and it was in his doc, and we've spoken about it, was um, obviously the reaction of the manager to the changes that was happening through Beckham with the players in that team and that sort of mix of a slightly older school, I guess. Um, and, and you guys been at the front of that. 
it was really interesting hearing about Alex Ferguson and how he kind of reacted to it and probably didn't like it and didn't like its impact on Bex at a certain point. Hence why Bex was lying about going down to London. Um, did you kind of have the same and same with you, Sis? Did, you, did either of you boys have the same where you were sort of seeing managers that were struggling to kind of keep up with the weirdness of mm. signing buses and things like mm. that? I think, I think it's been totally embraced now. Isn't it? It's been like, it's kind of part and parcel of it. Um, people having people managing their, their, their players' social medias, um, you know, kind of the brand stuff. It's it's kind of part and parcel of football. But I was in the kind of crossover period where it was like, just concentrate on your football and don't 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 get carried away with all this nonsense that's happening. And it was called nonsense. But I suppose now, you know, it's. It, I think everyone knows, you see even Jurgen Klopp, you've seen him on, the, you know, quite a few kind of ads recently, certainly with his earning a beer and stuff like that. Guardiola's done... Yeah, done a Marino few as well. He's done a few, isn't he? Yeah, I think even the managers are kind of embracing it now. I think because it's 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 a it's very very lucrative for for everyone all concerned, really. And I think um, it's that's, the way that's a strange situation, is. though, Pete, isn't it? Can you imagine some of your older managers, you know, Human. doing the same same types of adverts yeah. that you see managers do now? Oh, you know, I you probably turned down over the years. Certainly, when I was at Liverpool and you know England and things like that, you turned down so many things where you think. You know, it, it'd be it'd be great to do, but can I get away with it? You know, it's like a fine balance between can you get away with it, or you know, are you going to look like you're taking your eye off the ball? Um, quite often, it was it's such a such a fine line, um, and it's only kind of afterwards that you know I've done obviously a lot more than I I did when I was playing. Crouchy, you talk about fine lines and getting away with it. Obviously, big relationship yourself with Paddy Power. Um, friends of the pod, they do cross the line on a few things in yeah. a good way. Has, have, have, has there been things that you've had to turn down or to go, like, I can't do that? Or they've asked you to do things where you just go, absolutely no. <laughs> well, like, honestly, like some of the things they come up with, like they've, I remember speaking to, you know, obviously the, we, we've had him on the pod, the Minister of Mayhem, or, you know, what, one of the his title along those lines. Um, is That's actually on his email, you know, and it's like so and so you know, Minister of Mayhem, it's just like his job title. And he'll come up with things and you'd be like, oh, I'm like, can't, I'm not sure I can, I can do that. And he's like, yeah, no worries. We'll try something else. But some of the ideas that they come up with and things like, I'm like, I don't know if you, they're so close to the bone at times, but that's, that's what makes them, that's what makes them so good because they are, they're, they're funny, funny adverts. And that's why whenever I do something, like I want to be involved in that kind of, creative process of it like um, you know for whatever I've done I've kind of always tried to be across what what it's actually going to be you know I don't just don't just kind of sign the contract and go I oh, will yeah I'm going to do this and how much are you going to pay me like I want to be across what it's actually going to look like because I think it needs to be a kind of a kind of reflection of me I think that's why you know all the things I've seen the things you've noted down there like Bob Real um, certainly the Ted Baker stuff like the Ted Baker stuff that I did was basically like they were bringing out a tall range and I was like well that's right on my alley surely um, you know the Bovril stuff was just a lot of fun I love Bovril I've, like I, I've drank it since I was a kid um, that's you know, where it being, gets fun though yeah. when, it's, when it's personal like that and I get what you're saying about the Paddy Power ads and also your dad was sort of in this industry and so I think mm. you've always got my perspective of you is you've always got a really good eye with this stuff and um, but you do get involved in the whole creative thing like uh, a recent advert was with um, Barry from EastEnders actually being <laughs> married to your wife yeah. uh, brilliant idea we all love that um, but I think where it gets really fun for you it must be when it gets really personal because like if you love Bovril, to be able to get paid to endure that's that's where this shit gets really fun. We're lucky we get to do that with this podcast to a yeah. certain extent mm. as well. And we've had loads obviously on the podcast. You know, yeah. it's been 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 amazing. Obviously, making our own beer, potentially trying to make our own spray and A's. Um, that was the one with 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 my mum, for instance. Obviously, me and Abby are like M and S ambassadors, and like that when my my mum found out about that. She was like more proud than, than I think I've ever done. It was like, oh my God, this is incredible. Um, 
So that was that was obviously a good thing. I think it's got to work kind of for, for both parties, otherwise it doesn't work because people can see right through something that that you're you're forcing. Well, look, you must have seen your colleagues do some funny adverts as well. And and Sid, what what kind of has there been anything that you've been involved in where you you were doing it and thinking this is a bit weird? I yeah. mean, you haven't quite done the the Mike Lowen in a helicopter yet, have you? No, no. I'd love to see one of you boys do that. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Have you ever seen the Man United one? Um, the the wine, the wine one. Yeah, it was brilliant. That's one of my favourites. And Jamie Jamie Vardy's Thailand uh, trip one is good. Do you the, remember uh, the um, Castus Diablo or something? It's called, isn't it? Did, yeah. The Man United one. Did, did you remember the? Uh, was it Gareth South? Was it the Pizza Hut? Was it Gareth Southgate yeah. when he missed the penalty and he had a bag on his yeah. head? Yeah, bag Legendary. on his head. Yeah. A know. brown paper bag. Yeah, yeah. But it's legendary, isn't it? But it's. Yeah. I mean, looking back on it, it, he must have got paid a bit of dough for that. There's, I yeah. think, when they get it right and the adverts are good especially during kind of big tournaments, Euros or World Cup yeah. tournaments, it, it's it's so good because they clearly pump a load of money into it. And <laughs> there's some amazing adverts that happen around that time. I even think about the old... Did you ever see the Jason um, Jason Scotland Iron Brew advert? Did you boys ever see this? This is a no. real deep cut from back in the day. Um. And it was a player called Jason Scotland. The idea was Scotland's going to the World Cup. It's him on a bus and uh, <laughs> drink an iron brew. It's so, such a basic advert. Oh, I really good. hope someone listening to this <laughs> knows what this advert is. But there's some legendary adverts that come, mm. especially if the brands are willing to spend the money. And mm. obviously you see the obscene Adidas, Nike adverts with a kind of plethora of players. And and you wonder how how they actually get all these people in one space and do it. But they're all good. Yeah. Those ones, I love them. But I, I do like I do like the piss take ones. Like when you do have like a kind of high budget one. Do you remember the Nike one with Brazil squad when oh, they're at the airport? Yeah. That yeah. was a belt. Yeah. The Nilsson yeah. and Ronaldinho, brilliant. That. Yeah, there's been some. There's been some awesome ones. I mean, I've I, I, I've never been on an advert. I've never. To be fair, like playing wise, profile was never like where Pete was. You know, Champions League and top, top level. So never really got involved in brands or never really got approached. Was none, but, Sid, was there none at the clubs? You know, like sometimes the clubs make you do something. So yeah, big so big. the Chelsea one, um, that was big. We'd done a one for Samsung at Chelsea. Did I tell you the story about that? You said about going the there and, uh, and you, you didn't get off the bus until you'd been given. Yeah, yeah. Didier was getting 75 inch plasmas and I, you know, all, <laughs> took a... DVD player without a remote control. My dad yeah. was fuming. I'll never forget that. He was like, of all the fucking things, you've ordered a DVD player. Um, yeah, there was things at, at clubs. It'd be interesting to see now what people get, like Man City is sponsored by, is it Etihad? Yeah, like, or Brighton are sponsored by British Airways. Whether they, Because flights are bloody expensive now, aren't they? I you know, know like, kids, well, it's, it's not... It's not the Harrods card though, is it? From Al Fayad. It's not the Harrods card, no. Yeah, that oh, was a I've nice forgotten one. about that. Yeah, they, they, I just got the last sort of 18 months of that 40% 40, 40 off, of, uh, off of Harrods. Yeah, they were nice. I mean, I would like, I would like to a few more maybe individual ones. Um, I don't know. Ginger nut biscuits maybe or... <laughs> well, that's, that's what we're here for now. Pudding. Suntan lotion. Pudding. <laughs> Oh God! I mean, we we need to look at we need to look at all of this stuff, don't we? I remember getting a Rover as well. I remember getting a Rover at, um, at Villa. They were sponsored by Rover, MG, and Rover. Um, I remember getting a, a Rover. It's quite quite nice, actually. Did yours? Did was that one when you had to have it like on the side of the car as well? I remember players getting it. And it <laughs> yeah, going, no, I never Rover had that. sponsors Peter Crouch on the side of the car. <laughs> oh mate. Well, I remember my mate. Chris? My mate was a snooker player. Not on this level. My mate was a snooker player. Had his name on the side of his car. Shocker! It's a strange one, that isn't it? Name down the side of the car. Yeah. Have you seen? Have you seen any players that it's had a real kind of? I don't know, but it, it, almost they get carried away with it. It becomes less of a novelty, and it's distracted. And you've seen them get reined in. No, not really. Not really. They, they keep it a lot of it under under wraps. Mm. 
They'll just shoot off the biggest, training. The biggest grief that people used to get is you know when you see those kind of like the you know, there was a, there was a period of a few OK shoots, OK and hello, like yeah. oh my god, some of the grief you'd get if you'd done like an at home. <laughs> Cause they, 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 it's fake, isn't it? It's just stage. Oh, it's not the natural. At, the at home pics with yeah. um, with you and the, and the wife. <laughs> the lads used to get a lot of stick for that. Do you know but what? You, the but, did you do that. these ones, Pete? Since I've retired, I think I've done. I've done one. When we renewed our vows, we did. We did a few photos. Do, but do you know why they them, come in? Do you know why they come under some stick? Because it's the stylist that goes in and says, "Right, this is what you're wearing." And it's yeah, something that you just bar. completely wouldn't wear. And you're it's like, the club, isn't it? I was like, remember the amount of times that OK got brought in if someone had had a, someone had had a, had a little photo shoot. It was like, hold on a minute, have a look at this. Have a look at the clobber on him. <laughs> <laughs> got no shoes on. Got no shoes on, and like a, a white linen with some white shirt, some white trousers, strolling around like the, the beach or something. That's exactly what I did though when. Recently, but I wasn't playing, so no one so could bring it up. So, so, what would happen? Would you go into the Would you go into the dressing room and a player would be reading the magazine? That kind oh, of thing. Oh, standard, man. Yeah, be plastered everywhere. Yeah. Have you seen oh. that show, Married to the Game? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? I've seen the advert for it. Yeah. I know a few people involved. It's incredible, it's, isn't it? Have you watched? It's it? close to the line, isn't it? Well, because is I it? guess what I—I I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm guessing the. Wives or the girlfriends have signed up to the TV show and then by proxies, I don't think they perhaps get given all the information. These The lads are on this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's wild, some of the stuff they're saying. Is it? I haven't seen it. Yeah, I have. I see the Tarkovsky one. That, yeah. I've done the rounds, wasn't it? About <laughs> I saw that. He can't stop talking about it, can he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that, he's got to be getting stick for that. Surely he's got to be going well, the next day. And well, I don't know back. how you. I don't know how you get through that. Like, go have some thick skin there, haven't you? Who else is in it? So you've got Tarkovsky, No um, yeah. Darby, um, Darby Ward, and uh, Rup, that's it. Uh, yeah, Mares. How much? But how much say? Like, what I find interesting about this is, you think the manager should have an element of control over how much attention or anything goes on players and definitely that control existed a lot more back in the day and as you're saying Pete maybe that's relaxed so much now but, but even um, the clubs are doing it now like the clubs can't say anything now can they like every club seems to be doing like a, a Amazon you know all or nothing documentary um, so the cameras are around f through the clubs anyway so it's like you know they've, they've gone to the days where Alex Ferguson's running the club doesn't let anyone in you know no cameras in and no, no players to, to be doing shoot days and this and that. You know, because quite often, um, I remember speaking to Rafa about it, it's like days off are given as as days off. You're supposed to rest and recuperate. It's the reason you're giving you're not gi you're not given a day off so you can do a media a media day and you know, yeah. go down to London and spend hours on your feet doing an advert. That's not why the day off was given. You know what I mean? And and I suppose now that's just part and parcel for the course. I mean, if you could, if, if brands were going to come in for you now, what would you be up for? Yeah, but it's, it's a different situation. Like, I, I occasionally work with brands on things and maybe I'm DJing an event or I don't know if it's the right thing you do something on social media. But it's, I think there's just something very different about how it is as a, as a footballer. And I've seen, I've been involved in some of the weirdness. I'm, I once had to do, a job came in, they were like, can you host we went to a version of like the Great British Bake Off um, with, uh, who, was it, who was it with? With Alonso and uh, Azpilicueta. And so I go to this place and it's decked out like the Great British Bake Off and I'm Paul Hollywood or something for reasons I still don't really understand. <laughs> and these poor lads are brought in for an hour to bake cakes. You know, yeah. I, Bizarre, but this yeah, is I've what done it is a, I've now. done a couple of those. Do you remember, Chris, me and you went to Microsoft, the opening of the new Microsoft oh, store. we did, yes. And um, we, we did. played FIFA with Raheem Sterling. It was, the whole thing's bizarre. We sat there playing FIFA and Raheem Sterling, I wasn't even aware that we were doing that. I, I don't no, think no, it was. No. 
No, it's confusing all around. And also what made that extra brilliant was we were playing with a team of 11 Peter Crouches. They they sort of designed it. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. One of the most bizarre experiences ever. I, that was another one. I, I just remembered one there. I ended up um, refereeing a game of FIFA from my bedroom. Uh, Steven Bergwijn versus um, Mason Mount when he was at Chelsea. And um, I, I was basically commentating and refereeing it. I have no idea how that even <laughs> came about. Yeah. Bizarre. Okay, so what about new? What about youngsters that's going to come into the dressing room? Seen a few, especially with football, because you get like, what was it? It'd be like the, the latest uh, after, after shave or, yeah, maybe shaving cream, isn't it? You know, there'd be the older ones that'd be shaving first. Then it's all of a sudden, I remember Mason Mount, when he sort of burst on the scene, he looked like he didn't even have a hair on his face. And now he's, you know I mean, doing the old mm. sweep the across old the chin. One. It's yeah. like, see, it's the one, it's the one you constantly see, isn't it? Like, you know, on Sky Sports News or something like that, it's like Raheem Sterling was, was doing the, the razor, the, the, the Gillette, Gillette one for, for years, ages, wasn't it? It was on for. And the I sure, always wonder how they filmed them. What do you mean? Well, because Sterling's only got one take there. Do you see what I mean? If you're oh, doing a show... Go, once he's gone, he's gone. That's what I'm saying. Like, and then Maybe do you have it... to like lather up the other side <laughs> and then go... <laughs> Make this a good one. I've always wondered with them, with them. But why is it always footballers and shaving? Same, do you remember when the Liverpool team had a load of them? It was like the deodorant, Nivea. Bomb, wasn't it? And yeah. they were spraying. Yeah. Nivea. I did one with L'Oreal. With, uh, I did it. It was like the wingman... Um, thing which was, it was great actually but I remember filming it in my I had to kind of film on myself during COVID and I I was in my bathroom putting on some cream and and I think my daughter was filming it from the side and um, I had to get it in like uh, just because I'm worth it um, just because <laughs> I felt like if I'm doing L'Oreal I'm, I'm never going to get this opportunity again to say because I'm worth it and uh, and I did <laughs> that was a proud moment <laughs> strange confusing moment for your child though basically yeah, filming an yeah. advert <laughs> shudder to think what she must have thought <laughs> I'm just thinking now where I've been in dressing rooms where there's been sort of scandals as well where well if something yeah. happens off or even something like major on the on the pitch I guess you you can lose those brand deals. Yeah, yeah we've like seen it with... Um, Tenar, for instance, when he done the Kung Fu kick, for instance, mm. whether they would dro drop some of his sponsors or... If, if you're a high-profile person, that's, that's when brands want you, right? But if you're a high-profile person, you're there to be shot at as well and brought down a peg or two. And, and no one's perfect, are they? So these things are always going to happen. No, but have you... Um, does it ever make a situation where brands tell you how they want you to behave as a footballer. So you almost have a, a sort of manager from the brand. Have you ever been yeah. told off by Adidas, for example? Yeah, you know, I've, had, I've had loads of tellings off because I, I basically wear the, the old boots. Like I'm one of those people that, you know, they bring out a new boot every, every month, it feels like. And I was always like, I've just got into this boot. Like I'm just getting this one. I'm happy, I'm comfortable with it now. And then there's, there's a fucking new one. And I was constantly wearing the old ones. And then I'd score and I'd just get a call on the Monday like, you're in the old boot. Just scored and you're in the old boot. And by the end, I was just like, I don't care. You know what I mean, like, like my football is more important to me. And I know there is people out there kind of portraying, and this is what kind of pissed me off with football in general, really, towards the end. Um, people portraying this kind of image that isn't them. You know, like you see so many players. We were in that dressing room, Sids, weren't we, at Stoke? Like... You'd see players promoting themselves and doing like Instagram videos of them working behind the scenes with personal trainers. And you'd be like, this is all the fucking act. It was just so frustrating. And, um, and you know, there's obviously someone like come in and gone, right, you need to do this, you need to do that on Instagram. To, and, and this is where this whole back stronger came from. You know, on our podcast, it was like people promoting after a game, oh, you know, fans were terrific. Um, sorry about the performance. We'll be back stronger next week. It was the generic kind of Instagram message. And then the next day on the Monday, it'd be them, you know, with a personal trainer 
showing how hard they're working, you know, out of the training ground. And you're like, it's all bollocks. What a load of bollocks. And you're like, you know, the first, the, the worst thing is you see fans replying going like, oh, you know, you should be playing, you know. And I just think, oh, I've watched you train and you've been an absolute shambles. And your attitude stinks. You're cancer around the place. And you promote yourself as if you're like, you know, you should be playing. The reason you're not playing is because your attitude's a disgrace. Good rant. Well done. <laughs> Good rant. <laughs> what have happened Struggle in my to day? Get that in the comments you. underneath <laughs> the video, wouldn't you? But uh, I get what you're saying. The worst, what have the worst day, ones are says, the worst hey. ones are when lads like wear absolute terrible boots or gear, and they're just literally grin and banking it. Because do you think it's, it's disappointing to see players all wearing the same boots? Like, it wasn't there something quite nice about being able yeah, to pick your own brands and... now? They're monopolizing the market. You know, the new preds that are coming out, for instance. You know, it comes out in this certain color. They want all their players to wear that. Same with Nike. But it, it happens massively when the tournaments come around, like the Euros or the World Cups. When they come around, like the, the boots, they'll start getting brighter and brighter in colors. Um, but I remember, I remember them says, you know, like uh, some of the some of the players, like like you say, there, they thought the boots was absolutely disgusting, and you think they're getting paid so much money, kind of, you kind of have to wear them. Um, but like, so I just couldn't do that. I, I have to like the boot because I have to feel good in it, and I have to I have to feel comfortable in it. I, I feel like it would have affected my game. Some players are just, it's like a business. It's like not interested, like not bothered. Yeah, but it is a business. You, from what you're saying, there's the incentives well, you, are so yeah. so huge, and and equally, is this where you see a rise? I think it's fair to say there's been a rise, rather than I don't think this happened so much, you know, twenty twenty years ago, thirty years ago, of players all having to have their own number and it be a sort of extreme number, so yeah, that yeah, you know, that's their number and their brand and. It's not just one or two anymore. It, yeah. So many, isn't it? But my like my, thing, my, my thing with, with certainly when I was growing up, I always remember like Match and Shoot magazine and there'd be like a picture, like a photo shoot of Ryan Giggs and he'd have like the Reebok tracksuit on, the Reebok trainers and he'd be holding like the Reebok uh, boots. And I was like, oh, one day I'm going to get to that level where I'm going to be in Match and I'm going to be like in the gear holding the boots up. That was always like an aim of mine because I was like, I used to love Match and Shoot magazine. Yeah. I I'm think 90 minutes to have a magazine. I remember buying a, a Gigs 11 magazine once. Mm. Yeah. yeah, an actual, unless I'm imagining it, I'm sure okay, you had a magazine. Yeah. I also remember, and this is a strange one, getting a, on, on my wall, hey, you know, you, I used to stay, you used to wire my parents up so much that any, any spare football stickers you had, so any swapsies, mm weren't really valuable enough, you know, just sort of the common ones. I'll just go stick them on the wall and stick them on the door and that. But obviously, it destroys the paint, doesn't it? But just covered, cover my walls and these things. And a couple of posters as well that you'd get from shoot or match. And I remember mm. having a, a double, it was the Neville brothers, sort of arms crossed back to back, picture of the Neville brothers on, on my wall. I know wall. that photo shoot. I yeah. know that photo shoot. <laughs> I know, you know that one. Picture? I was like a foot... I was a football pervert then. So I remember most of the posters, like in the, I remember, I remember quite a lot of the, um, the photo shoots and things like that. I just absolutely love it because I loved kind of stuff. I, I knew every single player in the Premier League, what boots they wore, um, or who they were sponsored by. I used to love all that. Do you remember what posters you had on your wall? Mm. Um, Kelly Brook. Yeah. Kelly Brook. Football, football. <laughs> well, no, let's, let's, whilst, whilst we're here, so you had football posters. Uh, I had, I had a Lara Croft one, oh, by the way. You? She's not even real, for fuck's sake. Oh, what? Not even an, an actress. It, it was just, I, I had a poster on my wall, right, which was a 3D picture of Lara Croft. <laughs> so it was massive. And like, so you could only see it by wearing the red and blue glasses. I remember my poor mum came in one day and I was sat there looking no. at the picture with my red and blue glasses. Like she's thinking, what have, <laughs> what have I produced here? <laughs> wow. Wow. Not the old in-betweeners one where his, his yeah. hand's gone dead and he can't turn the laptop off. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't... Like, just to be clear, I would, again, if it was like another podcast, I'm having to claim, you know, I wasn't... 
<laughs> but all the same, it's not what you want to see from your child, just red no. and blue glasses on staring at yeah, yeah, yeah. a picture of an animated. Like... She's not even real. <laughs> not even real. So, Crouchy, over 35s World Cup. Um, possibility of this being done in the summer in Newcastle, the city of love. Uh, it's a seven-a-side um, tournament, I believe, from all the t- nations that have won the World Cup. So, me and Crouchy are involved in a WhatsApp group that Steve McManaman started up. Um, and I think this has got some legs, Crouchy. I do, mate, yeah. If all, if all the players that play, um, who have been mentioned, like playing it, it'd be, it'd be top players and I think it'll be really competitive like all the boys will want to be involved um, and, and want to win it as well so yeah I think it, I think it's a great idea Who's in the WhatsApp group? So I was playing golf and I was these my phone was going berserk and I was like what's going on here so I was looking at it and there was the names in this WhatsApp group like so obviously Steve McManaman started it Michael Owen was in there uh, Joe Cole Rio uh, David James um, Crouchy, myself, Jolene Lescott, wow. uh, Paul Scholes was in there. It was just, and I was like, first of all, my first thought was, what am I even doing in this group? Um, I don't even belong in this group. Uh, and then, um, yeah, there was a few people throwing a few memes out stretching already because this, I think this has got some, has it's, got some, it's an England call up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, if it goes ahead, it's going to be incredible. I mean, look, look, these are some of the nations. I've like, not heard of this. Sorry, what, what is this? This is an over thirty five. This is an over thirty five. Yes. First year it happens. First year it happens. World Cup. Uh, the nations uh, that have won it. So we've got listed here: England, Argentina, Brazil, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Uruguay, and just some of the names here again. Cambiasso, Crespo, Zabaleta from Argentina, Emerson, Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, Cafu, Roberto Carlos from Brazil, France, Thierry Henry, Desai, Ozil, you know, from Germany, uh, Materazzi, Cannavaro, Totti from wow. Italy. I mean, it's, if, if they get it going, Pete, it'll Sounds just be aggressive. Oh, unreal. <laughs> I'm going to get absolutely spanked. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, is this, what, is this competitive? Is this fun? It will be, yeah. Or, is, or does be, this will be competitive this, if, if it goes yeah. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And there's something, I guess, really nice about feeling that you can be retired from the game, right, Pete, and be able to play in... Do you know what I mean? Like, well, I, I imagine it will draw a big crowd in as well. Um, it would be, it'd be exciting to be kind of feel like you're back involved in, the, in, in, in games that matter. Is there an upper limit to the age? I'm just thinking over 35s. There's decent 35. Not that you boys aren't it, but do you know what I mean? There's still people playing. I'm um, even looking at Pepe the other day. Did you 41. see him? 41. 41. 41. He was running the whole yeah. time. Like the passion. The... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Look, there's no limit. It can it can go to yeah from 35 onwards. I mean, it's it's sounding like it's got. It's got some legs in it. Hopefully, it can become fruitful because that would be brilliant. Start off and then carry that on. But like Pete says, there it would be like this. This would the players would be up for it. Should we? Um, I think we've got time for a quick message. Yes. Uh, by the way, remember to send us in any messages, any questions for the boys, uh, anything you want to ask about the podcast or make us aware of. You can always get us in the DMs. But if you want to be super organised, just send us an email: peter.crouch@acast.com. We can't stress enough any questions, any way you want to get involved in this podcast. We love hearing from you. This is a message from someone called T. Says, um, lads, what's the definition of an appearance for it to count against the appearance bonus? Is there a minimum time in a match or does coming on as a sub at the last minute count as an appearance? I've wondered that. Yeah, I think this, this differs, doesn't it, from club to club. I think at the start, back in the day, and up to a point more recently, I think it was all the same up until, because managers are throwing players on obviously with what goes on in the game, you know, but then obviously from a financial point of view is upstairs are looking at going, they're throwing this player on for two minutes at the end or even 60 seconds and they're going to be getting the same win bonus as all the others. So then it come down to if you come on with 15 minutes to go or if you come on before the 75th minute, you get allocated the full bonus. If you come on after the 75th minute, last 15, you'd be getting a fraction of the win bonus. Is that right, Pete? Like yeah, some of the clubs? Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I always remember, do you remember a couple, couple of lads coming on 
And, um, you know, the manager putting like a young lad on at the end of a game when you've won it already and kind of that young lad being absolutely buzzing. You can tell. Yeah. That used to happen quite a bit. Um, whereas I, I wouldn't be able to tell you now. I, I, I just assumed that a win bonus is, is, is... I remember actually towards the end of my Premier League career, it was even if you're on the bench, the match day squad got the bonus. So it's like we're all a team, we're all part of it. I guess it's the same though, it, that excitement for away from the bonus, just getting that cap. I say this as you've got a, a, how many England caps behind you there, Peter? And yeah, there's there's thirty there, but there's twelve upstairs. <laughs> so it didn't go with the Feng Shui forty two. <laughs> you didn't want to break into a third frame, did you? Yeah. Well, I think we are doing it, but it, uh, I think I've lost a few. So um, they're up they're upstairs. So I'm actually I'm actually in the process of writing to the FA to try and get a few more. They said it'd be fine. So. Just the ones that are missing. That's amazing. So if you contact the FA trying to get those caps, do you have to give proof that you played? Like, do you personally have to send over clips of you playing in those the, games? I'm, I'm pretty sure the proof's out there. I think the FA know more than fucking I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm really proud of them, to be fair. They, Ab, Ab's had this kind of, the office kind of put round a little, in a different way. It looks good, but they're, yeah, they're right behind me now. And that's actually my, my book, my first book behind, um, they're mounted on. Uh, look, T, hopefully that answers your question. And um, and yeah, any questions like that? We cover so much so much about football on this podcast that I think sometimes uh, just getting some of those basic questions, like those those things, um, the boys can clarify it. So always feel free to get in touch. Peter.crouch at acast.com. Um, we keep getting sent these 11s mm. every week. This has been a thing that we now do. I think every episode of this podcast, there's a different theme. People almost decide the themes for themselves, which is which is amazing. Mm. Which one would you like to feature today, Pete? Well, yeah, you know, obviously, like uh, off the back of uh, Liam Pitchford um, being an ambassador of our podcast, there was a an Olympics eleven here from Alex um, Jack Shot Putland. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, the right back here is Luke Sailing. Uh, obviously, uh, centre back's got a uh, Mayna Fig Figueroa. <laughs> Skating, <laughs> Figueroa skating. Sorry, uh, Purvis Estupinian, Equestupinian. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> nice Purvis Equestupinian. Very nice tongue twister. Ryan Babel tennis. <laughs> That's a belter. Ryan Babel tennis. Well, Mason mountain biking. Uh, Emil Smith rowing. Uh, enjoy that one. Raheem curling. Yeah. <laughs> nice little Winter Olympics one. Very nice. Cameron Archery. This is great. Badming song. Badming <laughs> 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 song. That doesn't look right on paper. Badming song. <laughs> wow. That's a good uh, one, that. Okay. Beach Volleyball Watkins. Ryan Yates Boarding. Uh, Kyle Water Polos. Uh, Shane Long Jump. Superb. Right, that's more like yeah. it. Hundred meter crouch, <laughs> nice. Hal Robson Carno, a oh, canoe, great. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so obviously, you've that. missed. Very you've missed good, Sid. So we'll have to throw in. I think the two we've done before. I think you've got Steve Skeedwell, of course. Yes, uh, yeah. for the Winter Olympics, yeah. and Steve Swimwell for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! So, what's the latest with uh, with Liam uh, Pitchford then? Of uh, do we know Pete? Has he been in contact? Yeah, well, this I is think, the lad I who think, looks like Peter. I think Crouch. his guys. Yes. I think the guys have been in touch, um, and yeah, we're hoping that he's gonna uh, say yes. Actually, funny on the endorsements episode here that hopefully he'll be, be an, um, our Olympic ambassador for the podcast this year. Well, look, sorry, no Eric Cantona today. Mm. Hopefully he will be um, back stronger for one of a better phrase soon. And um, it'll be, uh, <laughs> be interesting to see when that can be. Um, but yeah, hopefully soon. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Mm. Uh, yeah. Any other business, lads? No, all good, lads. All good. Uh, hopefully I'll chumble one in the studio soon. Yeah.